Hello, my friends. This is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you so much for clicking on this tutorial. Um, we are going to use our Addy Egg for this um, project. We're going to make placemats and matching coasters. And uh, you're going to get one ball of Karen Latte Cakes in your favorite color. I'll tell you the name of this one further into the video. But um, I have only made uh, the two sets so far, um, but I'm pretty confident I could get one more set out of the ball. And if I chose to do just placemats and not coasters, I would probably get a set of four. So that is pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, so here you see them on my table without the dishes and they're beautiful and they are reversible. So you're going to want to watch into the video to see what the other side looks like. Um, using the technique of stitching the way I have done. Um, and uh, and then I also have crocheted the outside um, edging in the same color. So that even makes them match even better. But they do match because all the colors are from the same ball. So that's what that's what makes them beautiful. They're different, but yet they coordinate. Um, and here it is on my table with glass plates. So um, if you don't have any clear glass plates, head off to a thrift store. They're like a dime a dozen. That's actually where I got these ones, not the mugs, but the, but the plates I did get from a thrift store. And if you choose to make this set for for a gift for people, then, you know, head off to the store and grab a, uh, buy a, a clear plate, glass plate as well and um, gift that along with the placemat set because I, it really would make a beautiful gift. Um, okay, so once you have your Addy Egg, and you have your yarn of choice, we will get started. But I just want to encourage you to be sure to watch through the video because I do give a, a lot of different um, uh, tips and, and, and suggestions for how you can finish it, etc. So um, be sure to, to watch the whole video. All right, so thanks for joining me, my friends. We'll see you soon. All right, so let's begin. This is the latte cake that I'm using, okay? It's gonna, it takes a long time uh, to uh, get through a whole ball of this because there is 250 grams, 485 meters. <laughs> That's a lot, but it, it goes reasonably. It, I mean, it's not, it takes a while, but it's, it's not a hard thing to do. This one's called Frozen Ginger. Just beautiful, beautiful shades. And uh, I already made one. Let me just show you. If I can grab it here. It is long. <laughs> it's like this big long snake and it looks beautiful. And uh, I made it 196 inches long. Um, I was uh, rolling it up, you know, forming it into the shape that I needed it to be as I was making it. Um, and then when I when it was long enough, I measured it and it was uh, um, 196 inches long. Okay, so for every placemat that you make, you're going to need 196 inches inches <laughs> or round it up to 200 and you'll be good okay so grab your machine okay and let's begin okay so I um color that because our all of our machines have a, a white and black needle I color the divider that's between the two like I take a black permanent marker and I'm and I make this my first uh needle and I have that colored black it's wearing off so I have to do it again but that way when I'm actually counting rows I can count every time this black divider passes I count one <laughs> and so on and so forth. But because we need such a long one, you're not going to count 200 rows like that. Or you can if you want. So I just I just measure, okay? Not 200 rows, 200 inches because there's way more than 200 rows, okay? So we're going to first of all thread our, our machine, okay? We're going to stick it down into the center there. Grab it with our fingers, okay? And then what I do is I just hold this in so it's it's secure. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull it out from here, okay? Just to get some room so that you can um, do your cast on. And then I use this this side, okay? The side that's actually coming out of the center is what I cast on with. So then I go in front or behind and in front, behind and in front, behind and in front of that last white needle. Put that divider right at um, in line with this feeder and then I pull on the back here and it's all cast on the way um, the way it needs to be cast on okay and then what I do is I don't use that white cover that goes over top of it I just hold my thumb over it like that okay so it's in this part of my thumb is what's giving the tension for this yarn you need some tension because it's got so many loose ends there you you need that tension and for the first few rows which you don't even have to count because again you're going to measure you're going to just go slow to make sure that all those loops are going down over those red teeth as you turn. 
Again, I've got some tension on there. Then you can pull from the bottom here. Keep going. Now this is where you can add your Addy egg. If you're going to add it, um, go ahead and, and, and just tie it onto here and then it'll help um, with the tension. But for me, I'm gonna be a little bit of a rebel. <laughs> okay i'm not going to use this thing okay because i'm making such a long piece i just found i was taking it off and on all the time too many too too often and it was just a pain so i just pull this down every three or four rows because for the first 10 rows or so you've got to make sure that those that this goes over the teeth and because this is such a fibrous like stringy um yarn sometimes that's not happening okay but Another trick to get it started once, and trust me, once you get about 20 rows or like more rows on, then it, then it goes better. But I even stick my finger in there and push it down as I'm turning just so I can get, get it going. And that's pushing down, that's pushing those um, loops over those red teeth. Okay. And I'm just getting a good start on it. Not hard to do. It's not the way you probably will see anybody else doing it on YouTube if you see videos. And if they're watching, they might be saying, what in the world is she doing? But you know what? It works. So why wouldn't I? <laughs> okay. And then you're going to keep going. And I left my big handle upstairs. I'm, I came downstairs to film this, but I've been working on it upstairs. Um, and I left that handle up there, not realizing it. But you're going to have to still watch, you know, till you get some weight on it. That's why if you want to use the egg at first, you can. Um, but for me, I just found after every three rows or so, I'll just pull it, pull it through. But this one's snagging a bit on me, but that's okay. It looks painful, my friends. It does, but trust me, once you get a little bit of layer on there, it's fine. And you get your handle on there and it goes faster too. And to be honest with you, I found that I need to put a little bit of tension on there so it's tight. And then it goes underneath those, not really tight, but a little bit more tension than what you would think. Like, don't just let it slip through evenly like this because then then for some reason um when the tighter i have it the more it's it uh, slips easier it is to slip down over these red teeth um which is bizarre to me but that's what i found and i just did 200 inches so <laughs> with this particular yarn that's what it takes okay and then um once i get going i always have this little pick in my hand because everyone you're gonna watch as it goes p past this little um feeder here because you want to make sure that you're not having tucked stitches and then you're going to just keep going and every once in a while if you find that it's sticking then stick your fingers in here for a row just for six needles so you can get it back on track and i'm pushing down as i'm turning and then again if you want to put your egg on there you can go ahead and then you just keep standing as as you know it gets longer and longer and longer but for me i once i get a fair amount i'm going to pop back on and show you what i do with it i put it in an, a salad spinner some genius lady um showed us that she did that with when she had her her bigger addy machine um up she had a hole in the table which i do for my little machine but she put a salad spinner on the bottom so then it spun and spun and spun <laughs> and uh it's genius actually and so when this gets really long that's what i do and uh and it's just been working like a charm and, the, and when i put a little bit of tension on here i i turn this at quite a good speed actually and i find i find if i can keep it at an even faster speed um these little loops fall down over the red teeth with no problem. It's when I go slower and then faster and slower and faster that I find that, that they don't know what they're doing. So then I have some more trouble. So I'm going to get a fair amount going here and then I'm going to come back and show you how easy it is to keep going. So persevere for the first little while until you get a good grasp of it. And then trust me, it will, it will work out beautifully in your machine. Okay, before I show you um, uh, what it, what it's look coming what it's looking like now, I'm going to um, just have this very unappealing picture showing on my screen so I can tell you that um, I I had mentioned that I don't use my egg and I and I don't and I just wanted to say that it's because this will automatically even though it's in the basket it still twists and when it's twisting it gives um, some tension on the inside of the uh, barrel where it's where it's knitting so it 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 um, produces its own tension so um, I don't need that egg so anyways I just wanted to. Uh, to just tell you that before I show before I move on with the rest of the video so there you have it all right my friends so how's it going I'm just trudging along here clipping at a good speed well it's not it's not too fast but it's just a nice even speed 
um, so that I can keep an eye on those little red teeth, making sure that that, that loop is dropping down over it before my yarn, my needle picks up the yarn. And you can see in the basket below, let me just, you can see it turning. I can, I can see in my camera here as I'm doing this, <laughs> that basket is turning. And again, what a genius idea. So if, if you're watching this and you were the one who showed us that in a Facebook group, um, months and months ago, I think, um, not in my group, it was in another group that I saw it. I think, I can't remember actually, but if you know who you are, if you, <laughs> if you showed us that you put your, your, let your, um, project from your Addy fall into a salad spinner. Um, put your name in the comments and let me know it was you. I think it's genius. So I applaud you. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep going just like this. Just having a gay old time as I'm doing it. And I'm going to pull that every once in a while and keep going. And yeah, I'll see you when I get to 200 inches. <laughs> Okay, so I have it done. Friends, you should have seen how fast I was turning that handle. It was like just going like mad and uh, it was just working so beautifully. My second one went so fast. So now I lined up the first one to the second one. The second one's still attached to my machine. And this is how I'm measuring to see, I'm pulling them both to see um, if I have enough here. But before I did, I untwisted it all. Um, here we go. I'm going to just put that machine up on the table so that... Oh, see, here we go. Look at that. So I did way more than I needed to because I was just clipping around at, oh, around at such a pace. You have no idea. So I'm going to put a little clip in there because that's how long I want this one to be. Okay. So then I know I'm going to take it back up to there. Okay. So I'm going to put this other one aside. We're going to cast off first. This is why you don't need to count. You might go a little bit further longer, but um, that's okay. You can always take it apart rather than counting your rows, because who knows how many rows you actually need. And we're going to take this off just like we would on our other Addy. So you're going to remove your yarn, put it on a needle. Okay, and then you're going to turn until you get your first needle loose, which is this one. I'm going to pick it up. Oops. And then I'm going to pick this one up. Now, normally I wouldn't do, because it's much longer, I would have just let them drop off the needles and then um, taken it down uh, and then um, unraveled it. This way I'm binding it off, but I want to show you how to do it if you're new and you don't know how. If yours is just the right length um, and you don't need to take um, any length off, then this is how you remove it from your machine, okay? So that's pulled through. Now I'm going to take this off. But because I want to, to shorten this to up to here, I'm going to now, and again, I only did that to show you how to do it in case yours is the right length. I'm going to take it out of that first row again, just like I did. I didn't tighten it, okay? If I would have just tightened it, if I would have just pulled on that and tightened it, I would have had a knot um, just at the end and it would have been just good like that. But now I, I unloosened it again and now I'm going to just pull it down just like this till I get to that stitch marker. Okay. Man, I really went to town, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I was given her. You should see, I was rotating that thing faster than I could. Well, as fast as I could, actually, because it was just working so beautifully. Um, and I really think sometimes the faster, you, I would never say this for, for our other Addy machines, because, uh, and, you know, with most yarn, I wouldn't say it for this one either, that, that you should go really, really fast like a wild woman or wild man and get it done. But, but uh Really, for this yarn, I found that it slipped down over those little teeth if I went fast. And, and uh, it just was, it's the perfect yarn. Just the perfect, perfect yarn. So I'm going to thread that again. I cut it off. I'm going to thread that again, and I'm going to pick up the loop. So one, two, three. I could take that stitch marker off because it's in my way. I actually am going to because it's okay. 
And it doesn't matter if you are on the first loop that you like that was on the black needle or not or not. Um, you just need to pick up six loops, okay? So um, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay? And then you can pull it. Pull it tight and it closes it off just like that. And you can cut this off or you can leave it because you can start sewing with it. Okay. Um, and so now you've got your tube, your long 196 inch tube. <laughs> I did have a, a tuck stitch in one, one place. It's right there. When I pull on it, it's not going to come loose, but when I sew it, I'm going to make sure that that is sewn to the inside and my right side is out. Okay. Cause you can't fix a tuck stitch on an Addy egg because um, you can't get down in there but that's okay that's why you have to watch it very carefully to make sure that you're making it beautiful and perfect and um, I just loved it it went so so easily done um, it was great so now I'm gonna go ahead now that I got my miles and miles I'm gonna start assembling the placemats okay um, but I just want to show you this is how much is left in this ball of yarn I'm gonna raise my camera this is how much is left in this ball of yarn. I could do two more. I li literally think I could do two more. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm only gonna do, do the two. Uh, but you could you could probably, um, for sure, get a set of four out of this one ball. So isn't that like a dream? That's wonderful. Okay, so um, clear off your workstation and let's get ready for the next part. All right, so to begin sewing, you're gonna have to determine which side you want to um, to start your center on like if I pull up this other piece here this other end of my cord it's the light gray and I want this darker blue to be in the center now you can um you can just choose whatever whatever your little heart desires you can choose and um but if I'm using a, a like a glass plate a clear glass plate then um when the plate's on top I want the darker color to be um showing through the plate not the other color so um I'm choosing to do this and then we're going to measure five inches from this end to here is five inches and you're going to fold it in half just like that, okay? Um, if you were to make this a round placemat, you would just start rolling it like that and sewing. Um, just rolling it from the tip and sewing. <laughs> I can't do it with my left hand and one hand while I'm holding this, but you get the idea. But I want this to be oval, so I need to have a, have a straight piece in the center here um, to be able to begin my project. So I have measured it and I have turned it over um, five inches, folded it over five inches, and we're gonna start from this folded end so you're going to cut off a long piece of, of of tail now um you need to cut it off because you you want to um you want to be able to pull it you, you otherwise you won't know how far to to uh, pull it through if it's attached to your ball so you have to cut off a long piece then you're going to just go into that end here and you're going to pick up one bar one bar from both sides then you're going to miss a bar and you're going to pick up a bar go across pick up just one bar i don't want a full stitch i'm not going in between like a mattress stitch i'm just picking up one bar oops pulled that a little too hard okay and then i'm going to go across so i come out this side i'm going to always go in on the same side come across pick up one just one bar and you know what the beauty of this yarn because it's got flex is if you if you um if you don't stay on the same row that's okay honestly if you if you go over like a half a stitch or something it's not going to make a difference in the project um but if you're using like um like say a plain colored yarn that doesn't have flex and doesn't have uh, the texture that this fabric does, then then you know you'll want to keep it more even. But then again, you'll be able to see it more evenly, so it won't be a problem. So I'm going to pick up one. And the reason why we had to start in the middle there is because um, when we turn it, we'll be in line with where we need to be. And you'll see that as soon as I get up to the front here. You have to pick which color you want to use. For your seaming I've picked this dark blue and of course you're not seeing it on uh, this first part but once we get going you're gonna see it and I'm gonna as soon as we get turn in the corner here I'm gonna show you a piece I started already just because I want to show you why I'm choosing to sew it this way and why I'm choosing to pick one color I'm gonna use this same color throughout this whole placemat to sew you don't have to you be you and you, you make it multiple colors if you want but I'm going to show you why I, why we're doing that, okay? So now that that's sewn together, I'm just going to keep turning. I'm actually going to cut that off and hide it. 
sew it in right away. I'm just going to keep turning, see, because now we've set ourselves up for the turn by starting at that other end. Okay, and then you're just going to keep sewing like that as you go, like picking up one bar from each end, always going into the same side, always crossing over. See, I'm crossing over and I'm picking up. I'm missing one and I'm going into one. Now this was a half a row over, but doesn't matter. And when you're finished, both sides of you, there's no right or wrong to this. They both will look different and, uh, and they both, um, they're both beautiful. So, so as you see, I'm going to keep sewing in that like what manner, and I'm going to just keep going around and around and around, and it's going to shape into an oval. And I'm not pulling this tight as I, as I sew, I'm just letting it fall loosely how it falls. And then I'm going to sew it as I go. Okay. And so I'm going to show you, I just started, um, the other one just so that I can show you, uh, where did I put it? And, uh, oh, I just love it. This is the side I'm sewing. Okay. So this is the side I'm working on. It is the opposite, actually going the opposite direction. Um, but you see this little, let me grab my, my little pick. When, when we're doing it with one color of stitching and we're doing it crossing over and, and doing it the way I've been showing you, you're going to get this blue little patterning of stitching going around and around and around. And I absolutely love that. So you choose whatever color you want to do that. And I'm going to stay consistent with that until the very end. Now, that's the sewing side. That's the underside. But I think I'm going to make that the right side. This is the other side. Okay. So whether you skip, you know, whether you don't stay on that same row and you just keep sewing as you pick it up, doesn't matter because it just adds to the rustic look of it. And, um, it's just like, it just works out. So don't worry about having to get in that exact same row like we do with mattress stitch. You try your best, but, but you don't have to. And it just falls together. And then like, look at this. It's just beautiful. Um, so you keep going till you get it all the way around. Again, I'm picking the same color. For me, I'm using the same color of yarn for this particular one. I chose the lighter blue, um, this color here. And, uh, and I'm going to use that same color throughout the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to sneak this clip in here. <laughs> I don't want you to have to look at that distorted color any longer. However, you will see it for a little bit longer, but it does change a little more into the video. But this is more true to the color of the um, project. And I, I just, I think it's just so pretty. And honestly, what you're seeing on camera does not look like what it looks like in, in, uh, in real. It seriously doesn't. It's one of those projects that you just have to see it um, in person to see how beautiful it actually looks. Okay, so here's a sneak peek of the right color. <laughs> if you just want to use your um, yarn, whatever colors that you like, has it changed, then go ahead. But I personally do think that if you use the same color, you're going to add to the, the um, professional. It will look more professional and it will just it's just beautiful. It's just, you're adding that extra little color in there and it stays consistent. So um, that's how you're going to, to do it all the way around until you get all of your cord sewn on. I love this. I just absolutely love it. Like it's even more gorgeous in person than you, than you can see on camera. So keep going around and get that sewn um, until you have it done. And I'll see you back when I have it finished. But I made it around and um, I'm just on the opposite side here. And what I'm doing is I'm just, once I, I attached that end there, I'm just going up a little bit farther like that and then coming down and sewing it. And I did that about three times until I could get it to match and be look even. Okay. So then, um, I'm going to go up. I've already done it. So I, I went up, I, I just attached the end and then I went up one stitch like this and then went down here one stitch. And then just now I showed you the second time I did it. I should have done it from the beginning. I'm sorry, but I'll do it one more time. I'm going to go up to that next stitch and then come down to the next one here and then just pull it. And it just will even that out. So you don't have a, you don't have, um, an ugly ridge there. Okay. And then I'm just going to knot it off. I would tie another knot if I'm going to leave it like this, but I'm not. So I'm going to do a crochet border. So that crochet border will hold that in there. So then I'm going to just hide that and I'm going to cut it off. And this is the side I don't know why my camera's not. I'm looking up into the camera as I'm doing this now. Maybe it's because this table is brown. It's um distorting the color a little bit. One second. All right, so there is the the 
seam that we just did. Okay, so it jogs off a little bit, but you you can't, I mean, it's, it's the best you're gonna get it. And I wouldn't worry about that. I think it looks gorgeous, okay? So this is the side that I'm gonna use as the right side, and you can finish it off, leave it just like this. You can add a fringe if that's what you like, or if you um, are a crocheter or you wanna learn to crochet, this is how I'm gonna finish it off. I'm gonna put a slip knot on my, on my hook, and I took a 4.5 millimeter hook. We're gonna start in any stitch here along the side. And then we're gonna put our hook in from the top into the back, yarn over, pull it through the stitch and through the loop that's on your hook. And you've just joined to your work, okay? And from there, we're going to chain one and single crochet into that same space. Just like that. Then I'm gonna take my handy dandy stitch marker and I'm gonna put it in that single crochet, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to loosely, yes, loosely, <laughs> I say that twice, maybe three times, we're going to loosely single crochet into every second stitch, okay? So you are going to, you're not going to have big ugly loops, but you're just going to have no tension, like literally um, loosely, okay? And uh, I'm going to pull that up so that both, both of those loops are even, and then I'm going to go into the next, miss one and go into one. Make sure that it's loose. And I'm telling you the reason why is because, because when you're going around the corners, you don't want it to curl up like this, okay? If it's tight, it's gonna curl up. You want it to sit flat. So when you get a little ways around, if you find that it's not sitting flat, then you're going too tight. And then maybe um, if you can't go any looser, then go into every stitch instead of every second stitch, okay? But I'm going very loose, pulling up the loops. Pulling up, I mean this one, this top one. I want to make sure it matches the height of that one that's behind it before I finish off my single crochet. Okay, just like this. And if you're having a hard time seeing those stitches, you just evenly space them, just like that, okay? This material, yarn, is very forgiving. Okay, so then it's looking flat there, but I can already tell it's starting to pull as I go around the corner here, so I'm gonna go into, I'm not gonna miss one. I'm just gonna, around this little corner, I'm just going to go maybe three stitches without missing, okay? Three in a row, just in that little edge there. You might not have to do that, but I just could already tell that it was pulling a little bit. So then I'm gonna miss one, make this loose, single crochet into there. You're gonna evenly space your single crochet, ay, 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 all the way around, okay? making sure that you are on the very edge, okay? So if you have to stop every once in a while and flatten it out like this so that you're on the edge and you're not picking up here and then you're gonna, you don't want your project to be all wonky. You want it to be nice and perfect and smooth. So stop every once in a while, smooth it out and make sure that, uh, that you're getting in where you need to get in, okay? And then I'm gonna just continue around just like this. It's around my fingers, but I have got very little, I, there's no tension on it actually. It's just hold, I'm basically just holding it, okay? And I'm going to do one more, then I'm going to put it down flat to see if I'm staying flat. Yep, that's how you want it to be. And you're getting a beautiful, beautiful finish on your edge there. And once you do that, you can stop there or you can continue on with me. I'm going to continue adding to it. So um, you got so many options here. I like to give you options because not everybody likes the same thing. And uh and it's good to, to be able to choose what your style is and what you like. So go ahead and go all the, round, all the way around your project with a row of single crochet, just like what I'm doing. Or again, leave it without a single, without crochet and put a fringe on it or just leave it with nothing. However your little heart desires, that's what you should do, okay? But make sure you show us in my Facebook group and in any Facebook group, um, just so that... Uh, Number one, we can get the pattern out there if you put it in other groups other than just mine. Um, but number, most importantly, is because I want to see it, okay? So there we go. I'm going to continue around. That just, it just, honestly, it finishes it off. It does. It just makes a beautiful, beautiful edging. So continue around until you get your first row of single crochet done, and uh, then join me back. Okay, so I wanted to show you the difference in color. Um, so this was the first one. That, this is the one that we were working on. Um together and then this is the second one that I did it turned out a little bit bigger I don't know maybe it's because I stretched it a little bit more I don't know so I'm going to work on stretching this other one but I might just tap you know 
you're not going to see it when it's on the table anyways. If I will line it up, it's just like ever so slightly bigger. Um, and all I have to really do is put an extra row of single crochet and no one will even know. Um, but this one turned out a little bit bigger for whatever reason. It's so strange because they measured exactly the same. But I guess it was the way I was pulling it when I was sewing it. So anyways, that's the blue one. And I've got to tell, or that's the, the second one that I made. But I got to tell you, when I started this one, I started with the side that had the longer piece. And so I've got a, an oval in there that's the same color. And I actually will say I prefer it to this broken one. Okay, so maybe... Um, but I do love this one too. I think it looks more rustic actually. And that's, and I, I love the rustic look. Um, so either way works, but now you can just visualize the difference when you don't, when you just, I started, I guess this was the end of, like I started on the, I started on the other end. And when I um, finished off on my uh, machine, this was the end because I only needed that little piece to, to make it to, to, um, the length that I needed, 196 inches, okay? And this would have been the beginning because I started at the beginning of a color, okay? And uh, anyway, so it's just, it's all gonna turn out the way it turns out. And that's, and you know, part of the reason why I love it is because they're all, they're all different, okay? They're all gonna be different, but yet the colors, because it was all on the same, the same um, ball of yarn, they all coordinate. So it's just so awesome, I just love it. And so I, I used this darker blue to, Put this one together which is what I did my edging my first row single crochet on now again if yours is too tight make sure you do every stitch instead of every second one I just did it loosely around and, and then in some places around the corner I did it in every stitch but um, you just make it work or, or don't even look at the stitches and just spread it out evenly like an eighth of an inch or something um, apart just to make an even row of single crochet all the way around and and uh, and I'm going to uh, oh, you know what I, I love these. I can't even tell you. Sometimes sometimes you probably think I'm exaggerating, but I tell you, I am such a truth teller that, that uh, <laughs> I couldn't lie even if I had to. Um, I could tell you a story about that, actually, but I won't. Anyway, so you, you just can <laughs> continue going around and, um, oh, they're just so nice. And finish yours off with your single cro crochet, and then we're going to begin the, uh, the next row. But here's a quick look at the other side. The other side that um, doesn't have that stitching showing, that doesn't have that um, seam that we sewed showing. Um, and it's beautiful too. And now I'm torn. I think I, I don't know. So you know what? I'm, the border that we're going to put on this is a border. Like I, I started with this wrong, the, well, it would have been the wrong side, the one that we stitched on. I started with my single crochet on this side so that the right side of the single crochet was up. And if I kept crocheting in the round then this would be the right side but we are going to attach and then we're going to turn our work and go the other way and then go the other way and then go the other way so that we've got some right side of our crochet on this side and some right side of our crochet on this side and then when all is said and done we can decide or it can be reversible and you can just change it up whenever you want to okay because um now that i see this side i like it better <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, we're crafters. We can change our mind whenever we want to. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second row. All right, so row two. And I'm going to use this darker colored one because I think it'll be easier for you to see than that lighter one. Okay, so I'm going to, we've got our last single crochet. I'm going to remove my stitch marker, but I'm going to slip stitch into that stitch, okay? Change, uh, so into that stitch, yarn over, bring it through, and then bring it through the stitch that's on your work. Chain one and turn your work. We're gonna go the other direction, okay? We have a very easy border here. Um, we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch, which is the same one where your chain one is coming out of. Then we're gonna chain two, okay? Just like that. Then you're going to slip stitch into the very next stitch, slip stitch, not single crochet, and you're gonna chain two. Slip stitch into the next and chain two, slip stitch into the next, and chain two, and you're gonna do that all the way around. So even if you're a beginner, you can figure this out, okay? So into that next stitch, slip stitch, yarn over, bring it through, you've got two loops on your hook, take that first loop and put it through that second one, then chain two, into that next stitch, slip stitch, And chain two. Okay. 
just with a very even tension. Nothing tight, nothing loose. Just a very natural tension. So I, I would be like just a normal tension. So it's slipping through your fingers, but oops, I did a single crochet, but you're not, it's not too loose and it's not too tight. Okay. So there we go. Slip stitch, chain two. And it's going to have this little ribbing effect like that. Just a little, um, almost looks like a very small scallop, but we're going to go back the other way once we get to the end. So finish that all the way around doing a slip stitch, chain two into every stitch. All right, so I'm back to this one just for a moment because I've got one row of single crochet, but I want to make it um, a little bit bigger. So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to uh, do what we just did with the other one and turn our work. Okay, I'm just going to do one more row of single crochet. So I'm going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we did. I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to go right back into that space and do a single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet all the way around. That'll give me just that little extra um, height or width for, for this uh, particular placemat to make it the same size as the other one. And nobody will ever know. It's just uh, going to make a difference. But I want my... Um, first row of of the slip stitch chain two to be on this side of the work so I'm that's why I'm doing um, another single crochet with this side facing up okay and then when I get to the end of this row I'm going to do exactly what we did with that last project um, and uh, work the single crochet or pardon me the slip stitch chain two row um, next okay so we'll just pretend this is our first row Although it's our second, we're going to pretend it's the first. <laughs> okay, and then um, once we get it around, we're going to do that next row. I keep rotating back and forth to these two because that's how I'm working, okay? And uh, this is my first row finished of, uh, of slip stitch chain two in every single crochet. I think it's gorgeous. I love it. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to, um, because uh, this is the right side of the work, and with this with this yarn, like seriously, you don't even have to turn your work because you can't tell, but I'm going to do it anyways. And so I'm going to um, slip stitch to join when I find my crochet hook. Okay, so for this next row, I, I don't want it to um, be the same color. So I have gone into the ball until I could get the color that I want for my next row and I'm going to choose this light gray okay um, or or the orange whichever one but I think I'm going to stick with the light gray um, it's the, it's the color that's before this gray and I just think it'll soften it a bit so that's the color that I'm going to choose so I'm going to go into that slip stitch from the beginning of the last row okay and I'm going to insert my hook I'm going to loop that new color over it, pull it through that loop and through that loop that was on my hook. And I've now attached the new color. I'm gonna chain one. And then I'm going to turn my work because now I want the right side of that stitching, stitch pattern to be on this side. And I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch. Then I'm going to, well, you can see that loop is already that first loop is right there. We're going to slip stitch into that loop and chain two. Slip stitch into that next loop and chain two. You got it. Slip stitching and chaining two all the way around. Okay, going into that loop, which is very easy to find. It's the chain two loop. And then we're going to chain two, slip stitch, chain two. slip stitch, chain two. Okay, so now we're doing that right side of the work on this other side. So then that's what makes it reversible. Okay, you can continue this pattern um, and go back and forth as many times as you want for as many rows as you want. I'm just going to do the two. And when I get to the neck to the end of this row and all the way around, I'm going to um, I'm going to do just what we just finished doing. Okay, so I'm at the end here, I'm going to slip stitch into that chain one that I put at the beginning to join and then fasten off, okay? So that's how we're going to do this piece. I, I'll come back and show you how I fasten off just in case you're a beginner. Um, but if, if you're not a beginner, then that's that's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna fasten off and then we'll be finished the placemat, okay? So um, if you need to see me back, um, but even if you don't need to see the fasten off, keep watching because I have more to say. <laughs>
<laughs> of course I do. Okay, so I just uh, did my last slip stitch and chain two. Um, now I'm not sure if on the first row if I did a chain two after my last slip stitch. I should have done so. Um, if I didn't, uh, and you didn't, and you can't tell, then that's okay. But um, typically you should be doing a chain two after that last slip stitch. And then you're going to slip stitch into that first slip stitch that you would have hopefully put a, bar, um, a marker in as well, okay? So you're going to slip stitch to join. And then you're going to yarn over and pull that through the loop. I had already cut the end off. Okay. And then you're going to fasten off just like that. And then you're going to hide your ends. Okay. So this is, uh, I'm going to just raise my camera for you. This is the darker one, um, which I absolutely love. And this is the side where you can see the stitching. Um, so like I do, I love that side too. Um, it's flatter than this side. This side is more because the stitching was in the other side. This side is more loopy, more bubbly. And I love that look too. So really it is reversible. It's whatever mood you're in. And um, so for that other place knot that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use um, the orange as my first row of... of uh, slip stitch chain two and then I'm going to use this tan color as my second row so I'll finish all of my I can, I'll change the coloring on the second row or the first row of the patterning here but um, I'll always end my placemats if I'm going to make I, pr I probably will make two more <laughs> I might even have a set of six actually because I that's how much I love it um, but I'm going to end them all off with this this color um, this gray color at the end um, I, I think that that's just a beautiful way of ending it. It looks like such a natural thing. And um, so because the color changes are all different in all the placemats, the one thing that will be consistent is the edging, okay? Um, that will that will unify them all even more. So there you have it. I'm gonna go finish the other one um, and then I will get my coaster started and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that, okay? I'm not gonna do a full tutorial on that. I'm just gonna show you how long it, uh, of the piece that, of the um, cord that I did and give you a quick explanation. So go ahead and finish your, your edging and then see me back. Okay, friends, so for the coaster, um, I did 150 rows. Now I counted them and, and you go ahead and uh, go to my channel, go to the videos and scroll down to um, how to use and love your Addy egg. Um, I show you how to how to do color changes and stuff in there and, and uh, and uh, how I count my rows by marking my, my um, pegs there, so in my divider peg. So anyways, I did 30 rows of each color. I did 30 rows of this dark blue. This was the center of my one placemat, so I'm making this the center of my coaster. Then I just uh, picked, uh, you know, other colors that were in there. And then I went to the light blue, did 30 rows. Then the orange, 30 rows, back to the dark blue and to the light blue. There are 150 rows in total here. 30 in each section, okay? And again, in that Addy um, video, Addy egg video, I show you how to do a color change. It's it's really not hard, not hard at all. And so what you're going to do is you're gonna do the same thing as you did for your um, placemat. You're gonna bend this to make it an oval, okay? Because I want an oval placemat, but I'm not gonna bend it that far. I'm gonna only bend it about like that. So let me see how far is that. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Two inches. So bend it over two inches. Then start sewing like you normally did and sew it around and around and around. Till you get it around, then I'm going to do the crochet border just like I did um, with the other one using the same color schemes as I did um, with the placemat that this is going to match. So for this darker one, I'm going to do one row of single crochet in the dark blue. Then I'm going to do one row of um, of the slip stitch chain two, slip stitch chain two in each stitch. And then I'm going to, um, do another row of the slip stitch chain two in the, um, in the light gray, ending both of my coasters that match or all of them that I make when I, when I make more for the set, um, with the, with a light gray. So exactly the same color scheme as I did with the placemat that this is going to match. That's what I'm going to do for my coaster. Okay. So, um, that's all I'm going to say on that because I think that you have all the instructions that you need for that. So go ahead and do your coasters and finish off your sets. And man, it's just a beautiful set. I hope you're loving it. All right. So here they are. I love them. I didn't, uh, I didn't, um, measure them yet. Let me see what they are across. They are just six and a quarter, 
six and a quarter across. So they're, they're a wonderful size. Um, but that's the, the one that's going to go with the darker blue set. And this is the one that's the lighter one. I love them. Now this is the other side. You can't really see the stitching as much for some reason, but it's there. Um, and it's on this one too, but I, I am going with this side for the most part. I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, so there you have it. Those are the coasters and, uh, I'm going to just finish putting the sets together and get a picture and I'll see you back. All right, there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I can't wait to see your creations. So I'm gonna put my Facebook group link down in the box, in the description below. If you're not a part of that group, please uh, click on it and join and show me your work. And um, everybody in that group would love to see what you've made as well and the color variations that you've come up with. Um, and feel free to post them in other groups as well and share the link. Um, and get it out there. I, I would be very appreciative of that. Um, and hit that like button below because <laughs> you know that YouTube will, will um, recognize that it's being watched if you hit that like button and it will promote my video. So I would appreciate that so, so much. So um, thank you, my friends, for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, take care and we'll see you in the next video.